Hi, my name is Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics where we grow cool plants and today we're at the very top of the Hollywood Knolls in the Hollywood Hills where we're going to be discussing three very important um, issues with three guest speakers. The first one is going to be myself and I'm going to be talking about plant reproduction and more specifically plant sex. The second guest speaker is going to be Brad Fickus, who's got 30 years in the plant um, business and he's going to be talking about citrus care. And our last speaker is going to be Steve List and he's a teacher at the Silmar Charter High School um, Department of Agriculture and there he has a program where he educates the students on plant care um, at a very young age starting in high school and uh, and creates these plants to benefit the homeless in Los Angeles and, um, and other people in need. So we've got an excellent program and he's going to be talking specifically about vegetable and plant care just in general. So we're going to be covering all of those topics. Um, stay tuned and I hope you enjoy this and check out some of these views behind me. We've got a little um, peak of view, um, view of the Hollywood sign. Um, a little further to the right you'll see the um, observatory um, and and then further down, you'll see um, downtown Los Angeles, just right over the Hollywood Lake. Stay tuned, and hope you enjoy this series by Ivy Organics. Thank you. This goes in your pocket, and that goes right here. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, quickly, before I forget, just to touch on what Brad was saying. First of all, I call, I'm very, very random, okay? I can shift all over the place. I don't practice this. I'm just going to shoot for the hip and see where we go. Just one thing to, to touch on with what Brad said about spraying and on your citrus. I have this rule, if it's 50% or more, or how much can you tolerate, okay, then maybe spray. But again, if you spray, not only the bees, but you're going to get all the beneficial insects. So pest control operators love to spray. Why? Because they get a monthly job. They get to go over there all the time and do it. Okay, so if you don't have to spray, don't. Because usually your beneficials will control most of it. You can tolerate a little bit. I mean, what's the whole idea? You want fruit, right? So if your tree has a little bit of bugs or something on it, you're still getting a lot of fruit, who cares? So keep that in mind. But uh, yeah, the bees, the ladybugs, the lace wings, there's so many beneficial insects. Once you start spraying, you're in trouble. But anyhow, these are two really hard acts to follow. Charles, we got a little botany 101. I'm going to just crumble this up and throw it away. <laughs> Way over my head, but it was excellent. I probably learned more about botany in his 15 minutes than I have all my life. Um, Brad, always, always a pleasure. Um, known Brad for many, many years. I used to be a landscaper. He worked at uh, Treeland and then he went to Norman's and uh, I kept following him and our friendship has gotten really, really good over the years. Uh, we both have a lot in common and we like to learn. This is an industry where you can never learn everything. It's impossible. Today, just with the fact that I went over to Brad's for 20 minutes and walked around his garden, I'm like a sponge. I'm soaking it in. There's so much. Keep your mind open to everything. Now, you guys may have your own ideas of what works and what doesn't work, how you garden. I'm going to give you my knowledge, okay? I'm going to talk a lot about what I've done over the past um, long time. Uh, in this industry, okay? I'm going to give you some helpful hints. And, but bottom line is, if it works, don't fix it. So if you're growing a really good tomato, and you did it the last couple of years, don't change your mind. Just keep doing it. But I'm going to tell you things that maybe you don't know, okay? Now, how many people here are interested in organic gardening? How many don't care? How many just want to use uh, um, synthetic? How many... Start raising their hand. <laughs> okay, why do you want to do organic? What's the difference? Chemicals? Okay, no chemicals. Do you get a better product? No, you don't. And as far as chemicals, we all know we've been drinking and eating chemicals for years and years. Most of us are okay. Let's back off on the chemicals. That being said, we're going to talk only about organics. Okay, I don't mind chemicals. There is a place for chemicals, but you got to know how to use it.
There's also a thing called IPM. You're familiar with IPM, right, Brad? I, integrated Pest Management. That the way there's a balance of all the things. System. System. So that being said, we really, really, really want to touch on organics and work that way. What you guys do beyond that is up to you. What I don't want you to do is if you've got a really good organic garden and it's working, don't use any synthetic fertilizers because as soon as you do that, you'll kill all the bacteria and all the microbes and all the things that work in the soil to make it organic. Now that being said, yes sir. Thrive isn't a fertilizer, it's a vitamin. And my recommendations for Super Thrive or vitamin B1 is when you transplant, put it there. Put it in, use it. After that, if you've got a well-balanced fertilizer, you should be okay. Um, on our new tomatoes that we just planted, and I'll explain to you what we do. We have a whole new experiment going. I had the kids water with Super Thrive right after we planted, just to give it a good kick. When you're planting things, get some B1 or Super Thrive, either one. Um, did you know the guy from Super Thrive? Yeah, yeah, Dr. Thompson. Yeah, Dr. Thompson. He used to drink a spoonful of Super, Super Thrive every day. So everybody knows what that smells like? Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. The most knowledgeable person you ever met. I remember like, a year before he passed, I think he went to 99. Wow. Okay, I think a year before he passed, him and I had a long conversation about all the old people in the industry, how he was like the very first one and helped Normans and Monrovia and all these other nurseries, Valley Crest. And a uh, fascinating man, but um, yeah, Super Thrive basically for transplanting or if you want to give something a kick, but you shouldn't have to, okay? So again, we're going to all grow an organic garden, correct? Okay, and by the way, raise your hand, ask your questions. I, I don't mind. And if it's ha doesn't have to do with what we're talking about at this specific moment, we'll leave it for later. After I'm all done, you can ask questions about any of your gardening problems. Maybe I can't answer it. If I can't, these two gentlemen probably can. So you got a lot of knowledge here to, to dig into. Okay, how many people are into raised bed gardens? Okay, how many are not? Just directly in the ground. Okay, what is the difference between a raised bed garden and just flat dirt? Can anybody tell me? Yes, sir. Drainage. What else? Like a, a screening to keep animals from going Good, that's two good answers. Anybody have any other one? Are you going to get a better product out of a raised bed or in the ground? Uh-uh, not at all. The uh, raised bed, number one reason for a raised bed is aesthetics. It looks nice. Maneuverability, you can get around. You can change the soil all the time, which we like to do. Also putting uh, 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 like chicken wire underneath to get, keep the gophers out. Drainage, but that goes back to our soil. But if you're growing in the ground or in a raised bed and you want a good product, they're both going to be the same. But there's reasons for that. I like raised beds because they look pretty. That's it. And the kids can walk around. They don't walk into it. So <laughs> we have about 20 raised beds at school. The kids walk around them. That's fine. I always have the teenage factor. <laughs> so going backwards again, I got to tell you a little bit about me. Um, again, my name is Steve List. I was raised in the San Fernando Valley. I spent my weekends picking weeds on a dichondra lawn. How many people remember dichondra lawns? Okay, hated gardening. My mother used to pull me around in a in a uh, wheel or a um, wagon over here at Green Arrow on Sepulveda when I was just a little kid. Guess where my first job was? Green Arrow. Yeah, Load, lo, loading caca for $2 an hour. I started as a loader boy over there right out of high school, and then I started going to college at Pierce, built a business, and um, at age 39, somebody said, hey, do you want to be a teacher? But they got me in. I got a credential at UCLA. I started teaching, and I found out I liked it. But I kept teaching and doing the landscaping. For many years, I was doing full-time teaching, full-time landscaping, and it almost killed me. So I'm grateful for the recession, what was it, back in 2008, 2011 in that area? Because what I decided to do, since I woke up one morning, I had no business at all, I just went full-time teaching. Less money, but I'm happier. So I'm a full-time teacher at Silmar High School. Does anybody know where Silmar is? We're, familiar, we're uh, famous for earthquakes, fires, and the biggest drug bust in the United States, by the way. <laughs> so we're pretty popular up there, but I'm trying to make a change with that. Um, we grow 
lots and lots of material. You can see all this is grown by us. These are a little tiny, but um, the peppers are, aren't going to grow very fast now. And then we donate it. So everything we grow, we never sell. We donate it to number one schools, community gardens, um, low-income families. We work with a, a program called MEND. Are you familiar with MEND? Yeah. MEND is a food bank in Pacoima. And um, they build uh, gardens for the low-income families. And we supply the soil. We supply the, the plant material. What we're trying to do is teach people how to grow their own stuff instead of sticking out their hand. Could you imagine? We, California might be rich after that, huh? Yeah. By the way, if you want to talk politics, no. <laughs> I have a nickname. They call me the Green Republican. Now, that's an oxymoron. <laughs> but anyhow, we're going to go into, number one, we have our raised, let's just talk about raised beds, okay? Let's just figure we're all going to plant our vegetable garden in raised beds. We all got four by four, four by eight raised beds, but nothing's in it. We need to add a soil. Okay, now there's several ways we can do it. Who does composting? Excellent, okay? Be very careful about your composting though. Okay, number one, you wanna make sure that it's composted properly and it's not green, because it could do just the opposite, okay? And the way you really can see your compost working is stick your hand in there. If it's really, really hot, it's not gonna be good. It's still working. If it stinks, like, rotten fruit and vegetables, it's not good. What you want is a semi-warm soil, not too hot, maybe even cool, it could even be done, and then it needs to smell like dirt. So be very careful, because you can get too much of stuff in there. Also, how many people add grass clippings to their, to their compost? Okay, e do you fertilize your grass? Yes. Okay, don't use it. See, what happens is grass clippings you fertilize your grass, you have a lot of iron and manganese, okay? It locks up in the grass, your compost gets an overdose of that. So I'm going way back and say don't use grass clippings unless you fertilize, unless you don't fertilize. Sorry. With, um, uh, composted steer, is it okay? That's really not fertilizing. Okay. All you're doing is top dressing. Um, you're, you're, she said uh, fertilize with composting steer. All you're doing is adding uh, a layer of mulch on top. It's not going to do a whole bunch. It will help. But no, that, if you're, that's all you're doing, use the grass clippings. But be careful about your chemicals and grasses. It will lock up. Also, chlorine in water. So everybody has to water their compost a lot, right? Okay. There's a lot of chlorine in the water, and you'll get a buildup of that, too. The best thing to do is get a, a charcoal filter and put on your hose. Nobody wants to do all these things, okay? You're right. You know, simplify your life. <laughs> I don't. You should. We have we have six composting beds at school. They're ten by ten, and we layer them. We put leaves, uh, organic matter like your vegetables and fruits and stuff, and then I put a potting soil on top. And we build that up, and then we flip it over to the next bin. Let that sit for a couple months. Then we flip it to the next bin. I don't have a lot of manpower, so I can't turn it very much. The more you turn your compost, the faster it's going to compost, the sooner it's going to be ready. Also, the hotter it is, the faster it's going to break down. Okay, so now, now we still have our beds. We want to get our soil going, okay? There's a couple ways to do it. The first way I'm going to talk about is the lasagna method. Has anybody ever heard about the lasagna method? Okay, you're going to layer. This works good. I've tried it. Um, so what you want to do is you want to put like a potting soil a layer of compost, an organic fertilizer. This is really good. This is CNB. By the way, I don't work for Kellogg's, but I'm going to push their products. Number one, they're a local company, and I like to support anything that's in Southern California, but also they donate to all the schools. They're very, very good with the schools, and their product is unbelievably good. So this is, their, this is a starter fertilizer. So you're going to put in a layer of starter fertilizer, and then you're going to go back up. So you're going to go compost, potting soil, fertilizer. And you go ahead and just do your layers, and then you're going to plant right into that. That's the lasagna method. And then potting soil, what I want you to use if I'm going to sell you a product, I'm a nurseryman right now, um, Kellogg's has a raised bed mix. It's called Kellogg's raised bed mix. And it's, you can plant right in that. So that's the soil you want to use. Okay, so if you don't want to go and deal with the, the lasagna method, 
it's a little bit hard for you or you don't have the composting, what I would suggest, and you have these empty beds, just get the raised bed mix. Okay? And that's how we're going to plant today. So we've got a bunch of these. They come in a square bag and it's, comp it's compressed. Uh, four by four bed. I think you need four or five of them. Put the, put the soil in. Pack it down so you're all ready to go. We all have dirt ready to plant, right? Yeah? Okay. Now, full sun, shade, what kind of, what kind of exposure do we want for our vegetables? Does anybody know? Full sun. If you have any shade, it better be in the morning. You want that hot afternoon sun. Your vegetables love it. The more sun, the better. There are a few exceptions. I know um, Brad's wife was talking to me this morning about basil. Basil full sun or some shade or what? Some it will work, but it will go full sun. You can plant your basils in full sun without a problem. The problem people have, they say, oh, I planted my basil in full sun and it died, is because they planted in July. Plant it now and let it grow. A little basil plant's going to get huge. And just while I'm on, on that topic, Genovese or your Italian basil, you have to prune it. You have to pinch the flower off, okay? If you don't, it'll stop growing. It'll get bitter. Your other basils, like your Thai basil, the African blue, like we talked about, your cinnamons, um, all these other extravagant basils, let them grow. You want the flower. But the Genovese, the Italian, as it's growing, pinch off those white flowers. It, it'll continue growing. But if you don't, very bitter and it'll stunt the growth. Okay, yes? Which one, the one you saw this morning? That's Genovese, that's your Italian. Oh, okay. Yeah, that needs to be outside in the ground tomorrow. Okay. okay. And then Brad's gonna come up and get you some <laughs> other varieties. Okay. All right, now we have our bed ready to go. We're gonna talk about tomatoes. So I'm gonna give you a brief uh, tomatoes one-on-one, -on -one, what you can and can't do, but we're gonna talk about varieties and where we're at with that. So how many, do you, how many people know how many, how, what, what the two distinct kinds, not variety, kinds of tomatoes there are? Oh, two. Two. Determinate and non-determinate. Very good. All right, we got, we got some educated people here. Well, we've been here before. Oh, have you? Yeah. Have you had a tomato person before? <laughs> Who was he? Probably somebody that taught me. Um, Okay, you got an indeterminate and a determinate. The basic difference is, is one needs to be staked, one doesn't. That's how I determine, determine it. Sorry about the pun there. But uh, a bush tomato is usually a determinate, and your others, the, the thinner ones, you're indeterminate. Whoops. I'm supposed to put water in this, sir. Yeah, there is. Uh, oh, well, there was. Well, there was. That's right. Okay, uh, you need to stake these up. Okay, this one is a early girl. Everybody knows early girl. This is the old standby. This is probably one of the easiest tomatoes to grow. This is an indeterminate. You're going to need cages. You're going to need stakes. How many people are used to using those, those kind of funnel shape? Uh, okay, that's right. Why? Because your plant gets too tight. Ah, and they're too tight. No. What else? Too small too maybe too big and heavy and then they fall over mm -hmm. so then they get out of control so if you're gonna be using the those funnels they're called tomato cages you want to put the tomato cage in and put a stake in it okay now the tomatoes that we're doing at school right now i have 25 probably a 30 gallon plastic pots and do you know the rebar fencing that you use for cement mm -hmm. so we've wrapped that around and they're about that yeah. tall okay <laughs> one plant in there as that tomato grows, I'll be putting two bamboo stakes mm. on the top of it. It'll grab hold of that, and then I'll put more, and it'll go right up on that. Mm. So my opinion, and you're going to ask me this, can you put tomatoes in pots? The answer is yes, you need big pots. Okay, the smallest I would ever recommend it is a 15 gallon. Um, and that, even in the, over the years, I have had problems with because they dry out. Okay, we're going to talk about water, too, as we get going on more on the things, because water is one of your biggest problems with, with tomatoes. So we've got, I brought some samples here. This is an indeterminate, and here's your bush tomatoes. Most of your growers, like, are anybody familiar with uh, Tapia Brothers or Farmer John's by Holy Cross? Yeah. 
they plant a lot of tomatoes, they're going to do a determinate tomato, okay? Because they don't have the uh, facilities or the money to stake. Okay, you got to figure out how much they're going to put into this to get a tomato. It's like you guys, how much money do you want to put into a tomato plant and get tomatoes? Some of you don't care, right? Some of you go to the, you're going to cost you, what, $20 a tomato? Has that, has that ever happened to us? It can. Minimum amount of money on this thing. Be very careful about spending too much money. A tomato plant, it's a weed. That's my, uh, that's what I'm going to tell you right now. It is a weed. The more you neglect it, the better off you are. What do we want? Do we, like we talked about the lemon tree, do we want a beautiful green tomato plant? Or do you want a beautiful plant with a lot of tomatoes? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if your, your tomato plant is all yellow and ugly, but it's full of tomatoes, isn't that what you want? Yeah. That's bottom line. That way you have to keep the water off it. Number one problem. How many people have grown a really beautiful tomato plant and had no tomatoes? Yeah, you're watering it too much. Okay, that's why pots are kind of tricky because it's really hard. But in the ground, an established tomato plant, how often do you think you need to water? Once a week, every day. Once a week, maybe every 10 to 14 days. Yeah, deep soak it, let them dry out. You know, uh, other, you have to let it do it. What that'll do is, It'll let the plant stress, more flowers, yeah. more fruit. Mulch, yeah. right? Mulch, well, sure. That keeps the water in. Is it okay to let them? Pardon me? When you plant them, you want to keep them moist. Okay. And we're going to talk about that too. Right now, we're going to talk about varieties, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, planting techniques. So you have a lot of different tomatoes here. Charles has brought several. This looks like a better bush or better... Better boy, BB. Blank. Oh, there's another one. You have a lot of better boys, huh? Yeah, there's, um, so there's better boy. There's the Sweet 100. Uh -huh. My favorite of the cherry varieties. Um, San Diego for SD. You'll find San Diego, another indeterminate variety. The only one that's determinate in there is my Roma tomato. Okay. So you'll see the letter R for Roma. <coughs> what are Romas good for? Sauce. Sauce. Sauce, yeah. How about salads? Same thing. San Marzano is very close to aroma. Yeah, it's excellent, though. I would, I prefer that over the aroma. Well, I do too, but I, don't, I wasn't successful in growing them uh, last year. Okay, real quick. What happened last year in the middle of June? We, we had a hundred and twenty oh, degree yeah. weather. Yeah. A tomato plant will stop growing. It'll <laughs> shut down after a hundred degrees. And having that 100, 100 degree, 120 degree weather in that period, our tomatoes just freaked out. So we either didn't get anything or people started planting again and had another crop. It was horrible. We've never, ever had, or as long as I've been here, that hot of a June. Yes? Do you recommend planting them in a different time this year? Because we're supposed to have a hot summer again. Oh, get them in now. Now. Okay, there's two dates you want to remember for, for, your, for your vegetable gardening. March 15th, October 15th, okay? March 15th, you're pretty sure we're not going to have any more frost. Yeah. Sometimes we do, but not very often, okay? October 15th, the nights start cooling down drastically. You could start planting your winter vegetables. Your tomatoes, they should be up already pretty good. I've seen some that, that are growing from last year. They overwinter, you know, but I don't, I don't do that. I want to take them all out, redo them fresh tomatoes. We have 18 varieties of tomatoes in these barrels. Okay, we have all the old standbys like here. You know, these are these these are classic tomatoes. Does anybody know how many varieties of tomatoes there are? Hundreds. Infinite. <laughs> Over 9,000. Okay. That's a lot of tomatoes and every year there's more. How many people have ever been down to the toma tomato mania? Okay, how much money did you spend? Actually, I didn't spend any. Ah, congratulations. I don't have, any, I don't have a lot of sun. $4.99 for a four-inch pot. And I see everybody walk away with uh, uh, two flats. There's 16 plants in a flat. Do you think this guy makes money? You know how much it costs to grow a tomato plant? About 25 cents, yeah. You pay a little for your container and your soil. 
you know, so, it, but they've got so many varieties. It's really fun. It's like a candy store. My recommendation, go over to Green Thumb. Sago still has, I'm trying to think, of, Sago still has a pretty good variety over there. Uh, how many go to Sunset Nursery down here? Okay, what else do we have around here? Armstrong. Armstrong. They got a good variety too, but I recommend Green Thumb. It's in Canoga Park. They've got the best selection, plus they also have the best knowledgeable people. If you're shopping at Home Depot, Orchard, Lowe's, you're not going to get any good help. You're going to walk in there and they're going to tell you whatever they feel like telling you. You're not going to get the help that you really, really want. Spend a few extra bucks, drive a little farther, and go, go to a quality nursery for, uh, for your tomatoes and peppers and all that. So as we go, we're going to plant. We have a 4 by 4 garden, right? How many tomatoes can we plant in there? Maybe. <laughs> and I do this every year. I plant, I just think it's more fun to plant a lot, right? And then I'm pulling them out. If you're going to plant four, you better separate them, okay? One will fill that up. How many people have seen how wide your tomatoes grow, right? So you got to be careful about over planting. But I would recommend four plants in a four by four and just kind of keep them trimmed a little bit. Now, if you're doing the uh, determinant, four would be perfect. You're doing the indeterminate, you're going to have issues with it. So be careful of over planting your tomatoes. Okay? And we all do it. And I'll do it again this year. No, actually I won't because all mine are going to be in tubs. So I'm going to do all my uh, tomatoes in big tubs. And then um, in, our, in our beds, I'm going to do mostly peppers. I'm going to try to grow about 20 different varieties of peppers this year. How are we doing here? Anybody have any questions? Yes? Um, you know, we've kind of given up because of the ground squirrels and the pests and all that. Um, is there anything you can do aside from putting them in a huge cage to yeah. keep them out? <laughs> Not up here. <laughs> That's what I thought. Not up here. I mean, you know how it is. But you also have rabbits, right? Yeah. Yeah. You got uh, gophers, mm -hmm. ground squirrels, yeah. birds. <laughs> so ideally, the best yeah. thing to do, take your raised bed, Make sure you put a netting, a, a hardware cloth underneath, fill up your beds with soil, and then put some uh, maybe six foot posts on each side and then wrap that in your chicken wire. Yeah. That's all you can do. And, and if you build a little cage, maybe a door on it or something, but uh, it, you know, it could get really expensive. And, and the fact that he gave up because of that, it's completely understandable. I, I, I would have given up a long time ago, believe me. Okay, so we got four tomatoes, but yes. We're going to talk about that now, but no. Heirloom. What's an heirloom tomato? Does anybody know? Old variety. Old variety. That's a good answer. A, a variety that's gone from seed and kept over and over and over, I think, seven plus years. Okay? And there is, so that's where you get the over 9,000 varieties. So some of my favorite ones, um, any of your brandy wines are really good. Uh, the green stripey, the green tiger. There's controversy whether the green zebra is an heirloom yet or not. Um, but that green zebra is one of my favorites. Um, cherry tomatoes, uh, sun gold cherry, but that's not an heirloom. Um, there's so many of them and, and it's hit and miss. One year you may have a really, really good uh, crop of tomatoes on one type of tomato and try that one again next year and the temperatures might not cooperate and it might not be as good. So it's kind of hit and miss. We all have our favorite. Yes, sir. Tomatoes. Uh, the determinant is the one that spreads, that bushes. It's right? a bush. Needs no support. Sure. Okay, good. Okay, going back to pots, what's the smallest pot? 15. 15, 15 gallon. Gallons. Absolutely. Okay. Because, and, and even that, the last couple of years, I'm not happy with it. I, I really am not because... It will dry out quickly. Yes, you want it to dry out, but then again, it, it, you, you really can't determine it how much water are in those things. Okay. So if you're on top of it, you could do a 15. Okay. If you're on really on top, you could do a five, but oh my God, it's not going. Get the biggest pot available, okay? S good, strong support. If you're using an indeterminate tomato, make sure you got good steaks. You know, your tomato cages, I don't care how sturdy and how good they are, get your tomato cage, get some good steaks into it. Okay. Okay. All right. Going back to varieties, um, 
All your old standbys down here, really good. The Better Boys, the Beef Master, the Early Girl, the um, all your, I call them uh, hamburger tomatoes, and they, some people call them steak tomatoes. Those are the big ones you cut, you put on. You know, then you got your uh, uh, um, San Maranzo, the Romas. Those are all your tomato paste ones, your, your spaghetti tomatoes, I call them. Um, then you go down to your cherry tomatoes. Uh, Charles likes the sweet mil million. That's really good. I love the sun gold cherry. Has anybody ever tasted a sun gold cherry? Oh my God, they're, they're, it's like eating candy. So you could put one sun gold cherry plant on that uh, flagpole and you could be eating them all summer. The kids love them. I mean, they're just they're the sweetest things ever. And then, of course, my favorite of all time still is the green zebra. And that one has, it tastes like a tomato with a hint of lemon in it. So it's really good. Yes? Huh? We grow Campari ones, and they were really good. Yeah. And they seem easy to grow. Easy to grow is so important. But remember, what did I say in the beginning? The tomato is a weed. Neglect. Don't put a lot of money into it. Don't water a lot. Let it go. I've seen tomatoes grown along the railroad tracks that never get any water, right? Okay, it, it, it's funny that everybody wants to water and buy all these fertilizers. So, okay, we've already planted our tomatoes. What I would suggest, I'm gonna tell you how to do two different kinds of feeding. Start with a good starter fertilizer. This is really good. This uh, has contains beneficial soil microbes plus mycorrhizans, okay? This is your living soil, helps with your living soil. That's the you, Kellogg. That's the Kellogg. Yeah. So the Kellogg soil also has that. You already are gonna start with the living soil. With your compost, with your soils, you have a living soil, guess what? Your organics will work better. Also the heat helps organics work better. If you don't have a living soil, your organics aren't gonna work that well. See, then, Photo op. <laughs> Brad and I know these people that, that own these companies very well, and we like to thank them and send them pictures and tell them we're doing good. Yes? Did they buy out Bandini? No, Bandini just went out of business. <laughs> yeah. That used to be good. Oh, yeah. I remember Bandini Mountain? Yes. That's, a, that's aging me. Uh, yeah, I was at Green Arrow in 1976. And... Uh, yeah, I owe a lot to the Burquist family. I still speak over at, at Green Thumb a um, couple times a year and, and try to help them out. But yeah, good company. So if you guys like it, I said again, try to go to these smaller nurseries. Armstrong's is good. Sago Nursery. Stevens was really good. I'm talking the Valley because that's where I'm from. Over here, the only thing I know is Sunset, and that's a really good nursery. Um, has anybody ever been to Rogers Garden in Corona Del Mar? Isn't that nice? A very very high price yeah. so you're gonna spend a lot of money you'll go there for what it's kind of like a Costco but with a lot of doodads you're gonna go get one tomato and you're gonna buy all these other things along with it <laughs> yeah yeah you can yeah I was just gonna ask with the um, vegetables that you've got behind you um, and for the guests that are here I know the tomatoes I brought you haven't told me yet but are some of yours giveaways too? everything I don't take anything home tell me what I can uh, place down there but for everybody that's here um, as Steve concludes, um, we're then going to pick up whatever your variety of tomatoes or peppers or I think I see some lettuce down there. It's going to be down on the lawn. Um, also the roses, as I said at the beginning, take a rose with you or two um, as well. We're going to do a, a picture photo opportunity as well. I don't want to miss out on that while we're all still here together. Um, and I'm just going to start taking those plants down if that's okay with you. Mm -hmm. Unless you're going to be holding it up anymore. So I'm going to start doing that. How, how long before I'm done? How many more minutes? Safely, everybody will stay here another 510. That's fine. I'll break yes. it down. Um, you want your fertilizing. So you already got, after you plant, you're going to get the starter fertilizer in. And then I like to use the, the organics. Okay, the liquid organics. You're not going to burn with any of this. It's easy to put in. Follow the directions. Water your plants every couple weeks with it and you're almost sure to have all of it done. Again, going back to your living soil, making sure you have compost. So if we just have a dirt area, use a lot of compost, a lot of organic matter. Get that soil a living soil. If it's not, if it's not a living soil, your organics won't work. 
So a lot of people go out and they buy organic fertilizer and they just start putting it on their plants and stuff and they wonder why it's not working. Well, there's no microbes in the soil to break it down. So you really have to have a living soil. So I can't stress enough how important a good soil is. Yes, sir? No. No. And by the way, who owns miracle Grow? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't they own everything? No, I'm not against miracle Grow. I have, I, I teach everything at our school, if you eat it, is organic. We use no chemicals whatsoever. I don't spray anything, nothing. Now the flowers and the, and the landscape plants, we use a synthetic. I don't use miracle Grow, but it's kind of like that. It's a commercial, it's Grow More. It's a commercial brand of that. And uh, yes, I do that to show the kids the difference. We want, as a, let's say I'm a, a, a wholesale nursery. What, what do we do, Brad, at a wholesale nursery? How do we lose money keeping a plant there yeah, long? As, soon as, as far as I'm concerned, once the plant has fully rooted out and once the plant has filled out on top, every day after that you're losing money. You're losing money. So the faster you grow the plant, the faster you sell it, the more money you make. It's so yeah, so that's what I try to tell the kids. But on the on the other side of the coin, all our fruit trees, um, it's all organic. We spray no insecticides because we don't need it. Our biological control is incredible. Um, we don't we just don't have any problems. So you create a good atmosphere in your garden with all your good bugs. It takes care of itself. Uh, I do have down here. This isn't lettuce. These are Gerber daisies. So there's 75 Gerber daisies. You guys can have as many of those as you want. I'm very lucky when it comes to, you know, Brad and I know everybody in this industry, so I get donated as many flats of plugs as I want. About twice a month, I drive all the way to San Diego and I get about 400 flats of this. Wow. Our students plant them, four inch pots, six packs. We grow them, we give them away. So you got a lot of Gerber daisies you guys can help yourself to. I also have, who could tell me what this is? Now, when I was growing up, we called this a lid. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> right, let's see how many people we could take. This was a three-finger lid. Ten dollars. <laughs> That's really aging ourselves. These are strawberries. There should be a pack for everybody. There's ten strawberry plants in here. They're bare root. And if you just take... These are um, quinault strawberries. I grow quinault and I grow sequoia. Full sun. So here's the plant, okay? What, what I like to do is cut half the root off, stick it in the ground, within a week you got oh. leaves. They grow so fast. And just so that you know, a, 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 a strawberry grows by both rhizomes, which are underground roots, and stolons, which are over. So when they grow over, the, you could take that whole plant again. So you could pull all your strawberries out and you do it in the cooler times and just break them up and this is what you get. Plant them again. It's up to you. I would space them about two feet. But even that, I mean, it depends. I plant them close together because I like everything close together. I plant my tomatoes right close together and like I said, I pull them out. The tomatoes will get overcrowded, dig them out, thin them out, and you got a lot more, uh, I mean, strawberries. Strawberries go nice in one of those strawberry pots. Oh, they're great. Okay. Strawberry, why, why is a strawberry pot so important? Drainage is all, I love, who, you've said drainage about three times, haven't you? <laughs> you know what? Knows. Number one in planting is drainage. Brad said it too. Fruit tree, you don't have good drainage, nothing's going to grow. Okay, so if you have a clay soil, what do you add to the clay to get better drainage? Sand. What? Sand? sand? Okay, sand and clay equal brick. <laughs> But be very careful. People think automatically. If you have a clay soil and you add sand, you're going to make bricks. No, clay soil you want more. Who said amend? Amend is great. That's rice holes, okay? And, and your organic matter, your steer, or they don't use them. Yeah. Um, if it's a sandy soil, you want to go with peat moss. So any type of organic matter is so important. I brought this bag. This is Harvest Supreme. This is a really good mix to mix with any of your soils to, to loosen it up and break it down. Uh, it also has some chicken manure in it. 
So you got some organic fertilizer right from the get-go with it. So this is a good planter mix. But any of your planter mixes, very important. Clay soil likes a lot of redwood too, or rice hulls. Rice hulls break down slower. Okay. Rice hulls is an amend. I think that's the only product you can get rice hulls, correct? Yeah, rice hulls break down a lot slower than the redwood, but they're both really good. Yes? That's what it's just called? Like I would go to the nursery and say I need amend? Yeah. Okay. Kellogg's amend. Okay, grow mulch is good. Topper is your, uh, uh, mostly is half redwood, half uh, horse and steer. Okay. okay. Um, Do it have more salt in it? What? Does it have more salt yeah, in it? Than it than no, you know what? The, here's, let me tell you something. Remember the day, how many people remember nitrohumus? Okay, nitrohumus is what? It's Human. Sewage. Yeah, sewage. Okay, great product. Nobody died from it. Then all of a sudden... Some people got into it and they start. yes? Do they still sell Melorganite? Yeah, I think they still, Melorganite is another human one. Uh, people started to get, say, no, you can't do it. No, you can't do it. Kellogg's had to take all of that off the market and they changed it for steer. Now, Brad's uh, question is salts. Generally, if somebody says, can I use steer manure in my garden? I say, absolutely not. It's loaded with salt. What Kellogg's does is they take the steer, they spread it all out, and they water the crap out of it. That's called leaching. They get the salt, salts out of it. So their products are a very, very well leached steer combination of a lot of other things. But salts is, is it's horrible. I mean, then we can start getting into pH and a lot of other things. But that's basically your vegetables 101. You can ask me questions. Um, I know I could have touched on a lot of other things, but hopefully I was helpful. Just a second. Yeah. In terms of blending soil in my raised beds, could you argue that it's a good thing to keep it watered even when I don't have plants in it? Not necessarily, I mean, no. The, the microbes... Uh, yeah, you could, you, you could if, if, let's say he, his, his question was, if he's got a raised bed that has a lot of living organisms, it's happy, it's, it, do you water it? Treat it like a compost bed. Turn it over. Um, maybe uh, worms? Worms are great. Adding worms to your, to your beds are really great. Worm farming, vermiculture, using the worm tea. Somebody talked about compost tea? Okay, compost tea is a little harder to do than the worm tea. Am I uh, getting pulled back? No? no? Okay, yes? Uh, what do you think about uh, eggshells and banana peels in the bottom of the hole for the tomatoes? Huh? Okay, you're, you're, first of all, both are, number one, eggshell are very alkaline. Okay, back east... Eggshells are really good because they have a very acidic soil and you want to raise the pH. If you're only using a little bit, it's okay, but, but eggshells generally are going to raise your pH. We already have a very high pH. You can almost be sure that our soils and our water are very alkaline and by adding eggshells, you're not really doing anything good. Banana peels, fine, but they're not composted. So you're putting green stuff in the soil and it's not composted, it's not going to be good. Throw those banana peels in a composter, compost it till you don't smell it. But if you put green waste in a hole, no. And, and you're over your tomatoes, you're overthinking the process. What did I say again? No weed. It's a weed. <laughs> Neglect. Yes. What about Epsom salt? Epsom salt is magnesium sulfate. It's okay. And again, the sulfate will drop the pH, so that's good. Uh, some people swear by it, but... I've heard it's good for the root. A little bit. It's, it's got your trace elements in it. So there's no nitrogen, phosphorus, or potassium in there. Um, yeah, use it if you want to. I, I don't see any big differences. Some people say they get better roses, they get bigger tomatoes. Um, maybe one of these years I'll test it. So keep the eggshells out of the I would compost? just put your eggshells in the compost is fine. Oh, okay. It'll compost down. It'll break down. It's okay because you you don't want to throw them in the trash. They'll break down very well. But don't use it as your primary source because it does. If you read back east, there's a lot of things you read online or in papers that is all back east. Back east is very acidic soil. They want to raise their pH up. Okay, here we're very alkaline. I treat everything as an alkaline soil. Even if it's not, I still treat it because our water is. So you need to buffer the water, bring down the pH. Um, I'm not going to go into what pH is or why, but uh, keep that in mind. Yes? How about adding 
adding horse manure to your compost, is that a good thing? Fine. It's fine. And again, you're watering it, so you're leaching out the salts. We talked about horse and steer very hard. <laughs> and that's, you know what, you got to be very careful with that because if you're using green compost, if it's not broken down, no, your plants won't grow. Compost. Right, but make sure that it's broken down before you use it. So again, you're going to smell it. It has to break down. That's green. The horse. No, but if you're putting the green in your compost to break down, right. that's okay. That's fine, but let it break down. Let it go through its system. Remember, stick your hand all the way in there. If it's extremely hot, it's still composting. If it smells like uh, ick, it's bad. It wants to. You want to smell like fresh soil. Fresh dirt. Yeah, fresh dirt. Is there any more questions? Okay. Huh? Um, real quick, he asked, how often should you fertilize the tomato plants? Go ahead and put the starter fertilizer on first. And every couple weeks, put the liquid. That's all. I mean, it's not a lot. Uh, it's not brain science. Um, you're pretty well, by using all that, the soils will break it down. You'll get your pure organic tomato. But be very careful about deviating from the rule. Once you start using miracle Grow or any other synthetic fertilizer in an organic, you're going to kill all the microbes. And then guess what? If you don't have any microbes or living soil, your organics will not work. So living soil is very, very important. Number one for organic farming. Okay. 30 more seconds if you can be seated. Um, and if I, I don't need your mic. I just want to um, also quickly thank, and it was at my beginning presentation, but JD, who's behind the camera. Um, you'll actually have this uploaded over the course of this week. So if you type in Hollywood Knowles Community Club, you'll find this. I'm sure there was like way too much content. Um, we'll divide into three parts for the three speakers. and. He also um, updated our um, Hollywood Knowles website as well. Um, so he's the guy behind that effort as well. And thank you, JD. Um, if we can now all go down to the lower level, be careful with your... Here, you can take. I got fertilizer samples too. I got some grow power. Uh, go ahead and help yourself to whatever. Hey, Charles. Mm -hmm. Yes. This stuff here, I don't know how you want to give it away, but... This yeah. Well, no, because then what if somebody gets in... Somebody's got to be able to carry it. Okay, you deal with it. You're the host. So if you've enjoyed this educational moment by Ivory Organics, be sure to like it. And most importantly, by subscribing below, you'll be connected to all of these other educational videos. Thanks again for watching, and happy gardening. Well,